Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vector It's 2021 video. We're going to carry on looking at some of the amazing new features in this new version. And if you watched the design day earlier this week, um, you'll begin to see how incredible the new version is. Now, for those of you who've not seen it, please look a look at my other videos. Today, we're going to be focusing on um, the Gridline tool, which is a really nice new tool. But if you're interested, give me a call or drop me an email if you want any more information on any VectorWorks upgrades. And don't forget, we also do one-to-one -one or group training available globally. So be very pleased to help with that. But there's a lot more information on my lovely new website, so please take a look. Okay, well, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you after the video. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another VectorWorks 2021 New Features video with me, Jonathan Reeves. So today we're going to look at a really nice new tool for doing grid lines. Okay, you can see down on the uh, palette here, there's a new grid line tool. Um, in fact, there was a grid line tool here before, previously, in the older versions of VectorWorks, but it's been dramatically improved. So let's have a look at how this works. And do remember the little tip. If you would like to, you can drag off these palettes into the dock. And again, you can view those as icons. Um, but I think when you're learning or, you know, teaching, this is actually really nice to be able to kind of unveil those and see them all. Okay, good. So let's click onto the grid line tool and let's have a look at the mode bar here. Now, there's a few different options that are available. Um, so what we can do is we can click onto the style of the grid. That's something new that we actually have a style within the grid now. And you see there's a few um, sort of defaults that you can select from the object styles defaults graphics. Now you can change those as well. Let's just go ahead with the first one. I'm going to click into my preferences for the tool and you can see there's a few basic ones in here but most of it's going to be done by style unless you override this. So actually what I'm going to do is just change one which is the both ends text. Uh, show a bubble at both ends. So we go ahead and basically click to start drawing my um, first sort of bubble here. And let's click 8 metres, I think. Let's go a bit less, actually. Tab 7 metres, just so it fits on the page nicely. And you can see I've completed my first grid line. And this will show up in Object Info with some of the options, which we'll look at a bit later. OK, good. So what we're going to do now is offset the grid. Now, you could use the offset tool. Previously, you probably did. But with the grid line tool, there's a really nice new mode for offsetting. And this offsets the grid parallel, which is obviously what you normally want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and set my first grid to 3 metres, click return, and what you find is then it snaps immediately to that 3 metre increment every single time. Okay, so I think we'll just do one more, and so on. Let's go and draw another grid in. Um, what I might just do is just kind of move those over across a bit, it's a bit more centrally. Let's go ahead and draw another grid in. So we'll click to start drawing our grid there. Uh, let's come across like this. Um, if you want to, you can always drag in the offsets here. Let's drag those in. And let's again offset that grid. So let's go to our grid tool, grid line. And let's do the offset mode. And you can see, if you do do that offset, you will notice that it actually kind of seems to offset it with the um, shoulder at both ends reset. So if I were you, I'd actually change those to what you would like it to be. Let's go for 10. And let's offset that first grid. So Let's do this one at, say, 2 metres. Click, click, click. Very nice. And let's just change that one so it's got the same marker offsets at both ends. OK, good. So you can see relatively easily we've drawn a nice little simple grid. And we can adjust these. They're all quite nicely numbered, um, which is pretty cool. What I'm going to do next then, I'm going to get my wall tool. And I'm going to select my wall. I'm going to go up to my object styles. And I'm just going to go into, rather than the vector with standard walls, I'm going to go into my library. Um, you've seen me do this before. I've got a really nice library of wall types that I sell on my website, which is great. And let's just go down and select a sort of fairly traditional kind of constructed wall, uh, brick and plasterboard and so on. Double click that one. Okay, so what we're going to do is set our building out from the grid line. Now, you will notice there's two modes up on the wall tool. The first one is if I click the U key, you know, outside line of the wall, centre line of the wall, and then inside face of the wall. But there's also a really nice bode here. And what this does, it sets it to the core of the wall, core component. So when I click the U key, you can see the core of the, you know, the core of the wall is the block work. So if I was setting the block work on the outside, that's great, or the middle, or the inside. Okay, well, let's go ahead and use um, the inside of the block work there. 
and let's click click you can see so actually having the grid is really really helpful whoops just missed that one so just make a make a um a delete if you kind of make the wrong space and let's just kind of finish that wall off there brilliant okay that's excellent so i've got my nice walls there by the way a really nice little tip here i do like to show is level of detail now if you click this button um sometimes it doesn't always work now if it doesn't work the reason is because i'm at 1 to 50 scale so what you need to do is click go to document settings and just change the auto display level of detail and drop it down to the scale at least the scale you're working at 1 to 50. so we'll click ok so now i've got this lovely ability to turn the detail on or off and that actually will automatically let's go to 1 to 100 so when i'm in 1 to 100 scale and the button's on it will automatically turn the low level of detail on okay as soon as i click and i go to 1 to 50 again now i've got the option to turn it on and off that's really cool good okay so we haven't really done much work on the design let's just do a couple of things um let's go to um the door tool and let's have a look at a couple of doors so let's just pop up into the settings and you've seen my earlier videos or if you if you've seen my earlier videos you'll know that i'm a really big fan of the new doors here um so i'm going to go for a nice sort of simple three meter wide door and i'm going to make that a um sliding door and i'm just going to go for um three panels which is let's go for that all opening all sliding and let's just show the markers on the outside good okay so let's go ahead and just slip these into the wall um we've got three meters so that should be possible for me to snap there there and then find the midpoint and then just drop down from that midpoint to drop that in fantastic so now i could use my mirror tool m for mirror find the middle of the wall there and just sort of mirror that across into that wall and let's do the same on the other side just for nice and ease of use let's just find the center of this wall kind of mirror horizontally oh sorry you can't mirror when you're not in the same wall so that's fair enough but what you do you just select them and you hold down the alt key and basically drag them from one wall and snap them into the other okay that's pretty cool and let's do one more strange building i know but let's just drop that into that wall there and let's change the size of those because i think we had a two meter grid there so we'll do two meters and let's just change that to two panels very easy to do you can see good so let's drag that across to that wall and i'm just going to shut this palette down now i'm going to use my new pop-up display so i'm going to click spacebar and um, when you click spacebar once very quickly you get the new smart objects display i've also set it up with a shortcut the key to the left of one so i can invoke it if my fingers up near the escape key i can invoke it up there as well so already um you can see we've basically got a nice little kind of 3d there's a couple of things going on here so i need to go to my layers i just need to right click and edit the layer let's actually give it a, a name ground floor and the most important thing here is to give it a layer height so let's go and give it a let's say a three meter layer height just to keep it nice and straightforward now as soon as i do that the walls automatically respond to the layer height and just project up i'm also going to do something else i'm going to make these doors glass so to do that i'm going to get my wand tool my shortcut for this is w on my workspace i'm going to click into the settings and just double check it's on object type and the good thing here is that means that it will select all the doors in the drawing you can see they're all highlighted so now i can click settings and i basically can change them all together uh, so let's go and do that so i'm just going to go to door leaf and go to glazed great let's click ok and that's looking pretty nice okay now this is a video about the grid tool so really let's get back to focusing on the grid but i just wanted to really kind of show you a little exercise um, just to, to kind of develop a very very basic little idea of a building so let's save what we've done so far and uh, let's just call this grid lines that's fine grid lines one now this is where it gets interesting so we've got the grid lines in the model as you can see um, they're in a uh, class i think i think we made a class for them no we didn't so let's wand them all and let's just quickly pop down to our classes and um, we haven't actually got a grid lines class available yet 
Again, I do think that would be a really great default to add. Maybe as soon as you add the grid, grid tool, um, it generates a grid line for you. Let's just pop those into there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to create some viewports. So let's put it into a 3D view. And we're going to go, um, just for fun, quite like to show this command here. Create multiple viewports. Now this is really fun on training days. I love to show this. And what it really does is shows a bit of an idea of the power of BIM modeling in that we can very quickly generate multiple drawings from the same model. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all of those apart from the bottom view. Click OK. And within a very short space of time, you can see Vectorwitz has now created um, a bunch of drawings. Now, they're a bit random. Um, that sometimes happens, but don't worry, we can tidy that up. Let's click Update. Now, what's interesting about this is you see that we've actually got grid lines on all the elevations and the plan and the 3D. So I'm just going to tidy this up a tiny bit. I'm giving myself two by two bits of paper and I think I'm going to hide the page breaks just so we've got a nice big layout space. And here's a good little tip. I'm going to click OK and basically align those grids. And let's just move them up. That's good. And I think we'll just have that one over there in the same position as that one. Let's snap that one down. I think what's happening is the viewport thinks it's bigger than it is. Um, I think that's because I've actually got something else in there. Don't worry about that for now. You can always sort that out in a bit. Okay, great. So we've kind of, let's just line those up a little bit more just for the sake of this drawing. That's looking better. Um, we'll move that one there. So when you want to, you can basically have these grids on and off. Okay, so if I did want to go into classes, turn off the grid, no problem. I could turn those off and I just re-update the viewport. That's cool. But if I do want the grid on the elevation, you'll see it now shows. So that was a nice new feature that wasn't available before. Well, now what's really nice is um, when you double click into the annotations layer, the grids are available and you can see they come alive. Um, and each set of grids, even though it's actually generated from the original, has some instance settings. So this particular instance you can change. So for example, if I want those to show both ends, I can. Um, that's cool. I can even go to this particular grid and let's have a look at this one. Double click into the viewport here. Let's go to annotations. And basically if I do want to, let's go to add some elbows. Okay, and elbows are really quite useful because what you can do is you can essentially move those elbows where you would like to. Um, just sort of drag them out. And that makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes, um, you know, you might have dimensions or something like that. That would be a sort of typical thing, perhaps in the drawing. Let's just put some dims in where, you know, you might want to move the dimensions, but you might need to move the grid out of the way. That's not too bad. But that's really really helpful um, and those all respond they're the same grids basically they will all respond when they need to be updated that's cool so that's a really nice aspect to the grid tool so far what I'm going to do is just pop on to those and go to OpenGL and just click update let's see how that looks good so you can see they've now updated in OpenGL. I'm on pretty low quality settings. Um, so remember, if you do want to kind of improve that quality setting, just pop into your sheet layer and just kind of increase the DPI to two or 300. Let's go for 200 for the purpose of the video and click OK. So now you'll notice that if I just zoom into this particular viewport, um, as soon as I click update, you're going to get a nice crisp representation. But you will notice the grids are a little bit more kind of um, bitmap, should we say, or rasterized. So, you know, in some ways, having background rendering is nice, but you might also go and turn the edges off and go to foreground rendering and put those onto hidden line. And then you get the best of both worlds. You get the nice crisp rendering um, for, the, for the line work the grids you also get the nice sort of open gel rendering inside okay so we're back in the design layer and i want to show you a few of the new features with the grid line tool so if we wanted to resequence the numbers we can right click and there's a really nice command called select grid sequence we can also then right click again and select resequence 
So here what I'm going to do is just type in uh, the letter A and you can see here are all the current values and here are the resultant values. You can always change these if needed um, but just let, click OK and that just sort of does that straight away. So let's just do the same thing here. Um, so select grid sequence with the right click, right click, resequence and then we can start that from 10. By the way, if you do try to choose a number that's already available, um, you can't actually have the same grid with the same reference. So it intelligently knows to not allow you to do that, which is quite clever. So it's a very, very nice, attractive new little feature as well. Excellent. So for this ne next little exercise, I'm going to show you how radial grids work. Um, to do, do this then, I'm just going to basically select uh, my center point of my screen, which is my origin that I've turned on. And let's just draw a building, say 15 meters. I've changed the scale a bit. And let's sort of sweep that around um, maybe 180 degrees. And let's double click O for the offset tool. Let's offset that, say, um, six meters. And I'm going to do close open curves and offset the original object. So if you do that, you actually get a, basically a closed curve. And um, you can see the ends are joined in, which is really nice. OK, so next what we'll do is we're just going to put the grid onto this. And basically, um, before we do that, I'm just going to turn this into some walls. So I'm going to right click, create objects from shapes. I'm actually going to change this. You'll notice that you can actually turn this into a grid line. But let's not do that. Let's go to walls. And I will keep the source poly. So we won't delete it. And let's go center line. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty sure it will take whatever wall type I've got active at the moment. Um, so that's basically generated those walls already. And the other nice thing is I could right click, create objects from shape, and I could just choose that into a slab as well. So this time I will delete the source poly and create a little floor slab. So that's cool. It's just a quick little tip on uh, BIM modeling. Okay, good. So um, I think the center point here of the arc center is already available. If you did want to, you could use a 2D loci, a zero, the shortcut there, just to maybe mark that. That would not be a bad thing to do. Okay, good, right, so let's get back to the grid. We've done a very basic design. We'll do a bit more work on this in a minute. So we'll go to our grid line tool. So what we do here is we click to start the grid. Then we click to um, specify the sort of setting out point. And then what you do is you actually specify the, the sort of end point of the grid, if you like, to create that first grid line. Um, I would like to actually label this um, starting from one. I think that's okay, because it's on a different design layer. Um, which is cool. And then now I'm going to go to my uh, duplicate mode. And what you see is it's really nice. It duplicates radially, which is exactly what I'm wanting. And because I actually specified the center point there originally, um, that's going to work perfectly. So if I do 20 degrees, now I've done that. Again, it does this really sort of nice intelligent snapping every 20 degree around the, the model. So you can see a very sort of easy, straightforward way to create some sort of radial grids. Um, that's really, really nice. Um, I'll just show you one other little kind of cool tip. So I might just pop back to my ground floor, click onto these doors. Let's go for the two meter ones. And let's go back to our model. Let's just paste those in. So if I drag and drop that into pretty much the center of that wall, um, what I was looking to do was show you that you can right click and do duplicate array. And you can kind of tell the direction, you know, where to go. And if you do want to, you can actually type in the angle. Um, so let's go 20 degrees, and I think I'm going to need another. So we'll let how many do I need? Probably another five copies. And that will duplicate around that wall, hopefully at every 20 degrees. That's really good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's nice. That really is cool, actually. Good. OK, so you can see how the grid lines work. Once again, with the radial grids, if you do want to, you can select uh, Good sequence, you can right click and resequence. So if there was something in front of them, like grid A1, for example, just intelligently you can really mark those out. Um, let's just do both ends as well. Pop the grid on the both ends. Okay, that's fair enough. If I make the uh, shoulder length a bit smaller on both sides, I think that will work out fine. Good, so I really do hope you've enjoyed this um, video on the new structural grids or smart grid tool. I think there's a lot of potential for this tool, the way it shows in all the viewports, um, but also it's definitely good fun to try and it's super speedy in terms of kind of renumbering and editing the styles and so on. Well, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.